Today, we've gone undercover in a special consumer investigation. It's called retail racism. And victims say they are often ignored or demeaned in stores, maybe even treated like a shoplifter just because of their skin color. Well, armed with a hidden camera, we've sent an African-American woman into a Texas mall to see firsthand if she can catch retail racism on tape. The results might surprise you. You'll also find out why one woman went from this to this after an encounter in a beauty supply store. I hope you'll join us today on the show, Retail Racism. Are all shoppers equal? Come on back. Do it then. We begin the show today with three women who say they had nightmarish experiences with this thing we're calling retail racism. Please welcome Keisha, Francesca, and Sylvia. Nice to have you here, ladies. <laughs> Sylvia, let's, let's start out with your story. What did you experience? I went into a Burlington coat factory uh, to do a little shopping. I had found two jackets that were greatly reduced because they were damaged. Uh, yeah, damaged merchandise. Uh -huh. So I continued to browse throughout the store in the coat department, going from aisle to aisle. I ended up in an aisle that had the same jackets that I had that weren't reduced. Uh, and I just wanted to compare the price and see what my discount really was because my tags had been scratched through. I leave the aisle. I'm standing at a display looking at hats. And a woman walks up to me and says, ma'am, ma'am, may I see the jackets that you have? I give her the jackets that I have in my hand, and she asks me, where did I get them from? And I tell her. At this point, I say to her, well, what's the problem? And she says, the more expensive coats cannot leave the department without being escorted to the front. And now, I what, said, what price coat are we talking about? The coat on sale, $30. Not on sale, $50. Okay. So... I'm a little upset about this. Plus, she's being rude in the way that she's approaching me and talking with me. And I say, well, I'm standing perfectly still. I'm not trying to leave the department. And if it's about the ex expensive versus non-expensive, I've bought coats here, $200, and I've never been escorted to the front. So she walks off in agitation. I go to the front. I ask to speak to a manager. The manager comes over. I explain what happened to him with the sales associate, and he tells me that, um, that I misunderstood her intent, that she was just doing her job, and I disagreed with him, and I said that I felt that I was being harassed, and he now, told me... Now, now, let me ask, when, what, what were you hoping to get for, from for, for, at that moment? Did you want him to say he was sorry and admit some wrongdoing? What were you hoping for? I wanted, I wanted for him to tell me or... Ex at least apologize for my experience. Express some concern Express over this. Express some All right. concern, show some sensitivity to, to my experience there, and to, to show him that there's, there's a problem here. So he tells me that I'm making an issue out of a non-issue, and at this point, I see that he's being as insensitive to me as the woman, and I say to him, I said, as a customer, I don't feel satisfied that you're being sensitive to the complaints I'm bringing to you as a manager. And I said that... Is uh, this a white manager? Yes, it is. And I say to him, you're, you're as much of a problem as what I'm bringing to you because you're not even trying to listen to what I'm telling you. At this point, the guy runs into my face, gets this close, and starts screaming at me that... You can't tell me how to do my job. I've been in retail for 20 years, and you can't tell me how to do my job. I'm standing there shocked that he got this close. He turns to walk away and says, that's the problem with you people. You're always complaining that people are harassing you, and it's just your imaginations. The people from the Burlington Coat Factory know that Sylvia is here today. Uh, I, I'll share with you a bit later on something that we uncovered as we were producing the show and uh, also their response to you as we continue with this topic. I want to get into the story with these two ladies. Sisters. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You were out shopping and one of you is in the dressing room trying on some clothes. Yeah. Yes. Was she, that you, Francesca? That, that was me. I had shopped at this um, department store on two different occasions. Um, always paid with check. I never, you know, carried cash on me. Cause, um, 
the checks that I used always clear. They always cleared. I, you know, recognized the, the department store owner every time I'd go there. I thought it was a familiar face. So at this particular time, I had tried on some clothing. I believe it was like four pieces. And I was assisted by a female sales associate. Um, she didn't happen to give me like any number tag that said how many clothes you know you were going to bring into the clothing room so I went into the clothing room and then I came out and there was a hanger that was left in the clothing room and she immediately thought I had stolen you know a piece of clothing because a piece of clothing she assumed sh should have belonged to that hanger and um, immediately uh, she said Where, where's the clothing and I said where's what you know what are you talking about and um, she brought the hanger in my face. She said, you know what I'm talking about. You know, there's some clothing that's missing. And she immediately, uh, you know, went to go get her, her supervisor. What, what race person is this? They were Asian. Okay, so, she, so, so now you're feeling, as Sylvia was, I guess, embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I was frustrated. I, I was humiliated. I... I'd never ever experienced anything like that in my whole life. You say it became more than just accusing you, that then they got a little more aggressive. Yeah, right, they, yeah. they were very aggressive. They were very belligerent. They were. Um, I was browsing for like five minutes, and I was in the store, and I was just browsing, um, you know, waiting for my sister. And I just noticed, like, every rack that I would go to, she would follow me. So I turned around and I politely said, you know, is there a problem? Do you have a problem? You know, is there something I can help you with? You know, <laughs> can I help you with something, you know? And she says, oh, no, there's nothing. I said, well, why are you following me? Yeah, you know, I'm not, I have money. I'm not, if I want to pay for it, I will pay for it. I'm not here to steal anything from you. And then so five minutes into browsing or whatever, I hear all this screaming from the top of her lungs, you know, screaming, you have this garment, you have this garment, you know. And at I, this point, it, it became very hostile because there were oh, like yeah. four other workers. We were planning on leaving the premises, you know, to yeah. contact the police. They barricaded themselves against the door. Everything. They would not leave. Yes. They held us hostage, forced us to the back of the clothing room. Two females. This is scary. They forced oh, yes. us to the back of the room, oh, yeah. and they made a strip. I was scared for my life. I was scared for my life. Yes, she I sure did. I did. I was scared for my life. We're, we're stunned out here, right? I mean, it is unbelievable that... You know, you didn't have any recourse. Now, what were you saying? Uh, you know, why are you doing this? They were shouting. They were screaming. screaming. I mean, yes. They were going berserk. And I, I started panicking for my life because at first I thought they weren't that serious. Right. Do you feel this happened because you're black? I, I, do. I do. I do. Because of the fact, I don't know in the past if they had any experience with, you know, people of color coming in there trying on clothes or, you know, they might have stolen something in the past or whatever. But I feel that she probably or the people there had this sense of, oh, okay, they're, the, they're going to come in here and steal something or whatever. And that's, what, that's what we want to discuss today. Um, are there cultural biases that are built in to the retail industry? Is this another reflection of racism in our country? Later on, we're going to show you the surprising results of our hidden camera investigation on retail racism. But next, this woman is risking her job at a national discount department store to tell us why she only keeps her eye on black shoppers. Stay with us as we continue our Consumer Report, Retail Racism, Are All Shoppers Equal? We've just heard a couple of stories. Uh, my guests say that they feel they've been dealing with retail racism, that all shoppers aren't created equal. And uh, Sylvia says she got into a confrontation with a sales associate and a manager who got in her face and said, you people, you people are the problem. And uh, Francesca was, was strip searched uh, under the, uh, when a, a sales associate said they thought she had stolen something. So having recapped, your turn. Uh, I worked retail for about five years, and it's not just... Caucasians, black, Asians, Mexicans, it's everybody. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. But I think we should all be treated equal and there shouldn't be anything like that. Are you offended by these stories? I'm totally offended. Yeah. What was your comment? Well, I feel like you shouldn't have a retail clerk ask you to just get naked in front of them. I think that the police or an authority should be the ones to. We had, I mean, it's, if you were in our position, I mean, if you were in the position that my sister was, 
you would have applied. You to, would have complied. Yeah, too. to everything that they were talking because they were violent. They were very violent. Oh, How yeah. many of them were there? There were oh, four yeah. of them. Four of them, there, two there of you, two and they had barricaded two, the exit. They barricaded they the, the doors. The whole doors. They would not let. They held a talk. Oh, yeah. Did they you take any kind of action against these people or the store? After uh, the incident happened, we called the authorities. They said it was a matter that they couldn't handle. That we'd have to handle it civilly in court. They are you, they are you doing that? Us, they wouldn't even let us file a report that day. Mm. Yeah, they wouldn't even let the authorities. Are you taking action? Yes, we are. We are uh, right now pursuing legal counsel. Yeah. You said you weren't surprised? No, I'm not surprised because I've experienced it on more than one occasion. Just based on what I have on and the color of my skin, um, I'm questioned uh, about my ID and somebody that can be in front of me. I was in a store and somebody was in front of me and I gave the lady my credit card, my driver's license. Somebody was in front of me and she sent me to the third degree, but she didn't do the same thing to this woman that was in front of Who me. Who was white? Yeah. But I approached it. Uh, I, I, I uh, made a comment because I said, I asked her, when I got to her, I asked her. I said, you didn't treat us both the same and I asked to see the manager. And he made an excuse for it, but... What you kind know. of excuse would there be for that? Well, it's no excuse, but you know, people are really sick and people are in denial about they're in denial and don't know they're in denial. Well, let me introduce you to Sherry. Sherry works for a popular discount department store. And do you think that there is a, um, a difference in how these shoppers act and how they are treated in a store? Yes, I do because how they come in, how they talk, how they dress is how I, why I watch them. Now, if they dress like respectful people, then I don't watch them. If who dresses like respectful people? Anybody. They would dress respectful like society expects you to dress. They dress like trash or bums. I'm going to watch them closely. Well, but aren't there a lot of trashy dressing people who have money? Who aren't necessarily stealing? Yes. <laughs> White or black, I watch them. In your opinion, do the black customers steal more often than whites? Yes, they do. They do steal. I've seen it time and time again throughout my, uh, my job experience. So, so, now let me understand you. Do you, do you consider yourself to be a racist? No. <laughs> so then why Denial. do you, why do you feel that the black customer is more suspicious? Because they act it. They do not come in there just shopping. They'll sit there and they'll be looking around like if somebody's watching now and all. You see it in the cameras and everything else. Someone always is watching Someone is watching. watching, now. Exactly. Someone is I watching. Honey. I'll need to the feel that I'm trapped. They I get watched when I go shopping. Don't bother me. Well, how would you feel Honestly. if you're in the store and, and have to be watched every 24 hours that you're in there shopping or whatever, and you everywhere that you go, there's somebody constantly behind your back. How would you feel? They've done put, that to put me. Put that before. in your, you know, They've done that to you have me. to, you have to realize how we feel I've as people. I've been such when I, okay, when I buy things and I come out of the store, even before I get door, they say, no, excuse me, we need to look in your bags. And I, and no, I have but to you have to put seat. yourself in a situation. How would you feel if every minute that you go into a store that you're constantly being watched for no apparent reason? You're liable to be arrested the minute you walk out the door. What were you going to yeah, say, ma'am? Exactly. The problem is, she already has a stereotype about black people when they come into the store. And so what happens is, you think that more black people are shoplifting over the white people because you're so busy watching us that other people are coming in the store and ripping you off. So that's well, when we come back, you might be surprised to find out who the best shoplifters actually are. And later, was this woman a victim of retail racism when she was beat up outside a beauty supply store? We'll get into it. Talk some more after this. Stay close. We just heard Sherry, who works as a sales associate in a national chain, say that she watches the black customers more because she believes that the black customers steal more often. Is that right? Yes, that is true. Time and time again, Throughout the time I've been with the company I work for, I see blacks still more. And it's constant. I haven't seen, I haven't had a white person still for me yet. No. If, you are, if you are running after black people, I don't if, you're, after people. if you're watching black you people Sherry? steal, if you're so busy spending your time watching African Americans steal, you cannot, Sherry. you cannot find a white person stealing because you aren't watching them. I don't watch blacks, I watch You them. said, minutes, that's what I you leave. said. And, Another offense? What do you mean saying trashy and dirty? How is that relative to being black? 
Sharon, and Sharon, like Sharon, Sharon the, people are dressed respectfully. You don't get treated respectfully. If I wanted to go shopping in shorts, t-shirt, and slippers, flip-flops, I could. And you're gonna I be could. Then you'll be happy. I could. It has nothing to do with me spending my money. Sharon, I, I, Sharon. the respect comes out of Wait. me coming in there. I need to be respected for, for who I am not according to how I'm dressed or what color I am. I think we'd all agree that any race shopper who goes in underdressed, I know when I go in some of these haughty stores in Beverly Hills and I'm wearing cutoffs and a t-shirt, I can't get the time of day. Um, it, it, that happens as well. Yeah, you comment? Yes, I, was, I wanted to ask Sherry. Sh mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, where you are looking right now, you don't look no better than anybody out here in this <laughs> audience, so you could be... Uh, uh, for a stick up too. Well, I'm in a nice outfit. No, I'm wearing good clothes. She's dressed properly, the way society expects her to dress, and all. And I wouldn't even be worried about watching her. So, regardless of the color shopper, if he or she is yeah. dressed okay, you figure they're not going to steal. Yeah. Don't well-dressed people steal? Oh, I haven't, we haven't. We haven't seen none. Your comment, sir. I've worked in a popular retail store for many years, and. The whites steal just as much as the blacks, as the Hispanics, That's everybody. True. It's just you're singling out. You're calling. I haven't had no Hispanics steal from me yet, and they you come in constantly. You are chasing them. You, you know, let me, let me bring them. in watch them too. Tamara Trotter, who is a cultural no. sensitivity <laughs> consultant. Um, she's also the author of a book called Roadmap to Cultural Awareness. Is, is there validity to what you're hearing? Are you surprised by this? I'm absolutely not surprised. I've experienced the same type of treatment that Sherry has talked about. Sherry is an example of someone who is willing to provide and telling us that she provides inferior service and she should not continue in this way. It's unfortunate that people can look at someone's color and the way that they're dressed and determine what the size of their pocketbook is. Everyone is here for a reason. Everyone's put in the face of this earth to live happily with their families and no one deserves this type of treatment. The universal theme of the book, Lisa, is reach out to everyone, deny no one, for we are all members of the human race. That's a beautiful message. This is Andre Stevens, who works in store security. Now, we've heard Sherry and others say, well, it's only this type of customer who steals, and this, it, based on personal experience. But is there a profile of the most common shoplifter? Oh, definitely. I'll say um, the, the common shoplifter to me would be anybody professional, business-like. Come in and uh, try to, you know, sway their way through the store. In some ways, I do agree with Sherry. Uh, you have to sometimes stereotype, whether it be... Uh, black, white, Hispanic. Are you told uh, where you work to watch a certain kind of customer? Oh, yeah, definitely. Not me personally, but I've worked with a lot of associates, friends of mine, that, I, you know, was in that kind of predicament where they were told to just single, single out a group of people. Are they uncomfortable with you um, confronting white shoppers? Oh, yeah, all the time. I've seen it often. I remember this particular incident when uh, a buddy of mine was sending a uh, to watch a group of blacks came in strictly because the way they, uh, you know, the, the way they presented themselves, the dress code. Um, what they Sherry was talking about. Exactly. So in some ways, I do sort of agree with Sherry. Here's, here's what we have, un have found out in our investigation, that um, white males who are dressed upscale are the ones who get away with most of the shoplifting. I found that to be surprising. But then again, you can find statistics to prove most anything. That's the scary part, isn't it? All right, we're going to have the results of our hidden camera investigation. When we come back, I'll share it with you in a couple of minutes. Do you have an unusual talent and you think you should be a star? Well, maybe with our consumer report on retail racism. And often the discrimination can be blatant, as we've already heard today, but sometimes it can be a subtle display. We thought that we would try to see if we could find an example of retail racism on videotape. So we equipped our brave volunteer, Phyllis, here with a hidden camera in your eyeglasses, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, we sent her into a mall in, uh, in Texas, her home state. Have you experienced retail racism before? No, I hadn't before. And this was, it really shocked me because when your producer called, I said, you're not going to find this here. I said, you know, it's blatant, like the, when you're driving down the road and someone calls your name, I've experienced that type of racism, but never this subtle kind. It w I was shocked. I really was. I was All right, surprised. let's set up the first example when you were shopping. 
Um, I had gone into this first store, and um, when I went into the store, I mean, I, looked, I made eye contact with the salespeople. No one said anything. There was no one else in the store. I was the only one. So I picked up some things. I even went to the counter, picked up rings and things. All right, let's, let's roll the tape and see this happening, again, from her eyeglass cam. See, I was picking up rings. I wear a lot of rings. And I even went over. They had just tagged that stuff. I saw them before I walked in. I picked the thing up. You see how they're ignoring me. They had seen me before when I first came in. So they in. know you're there? Yes, they know I was there. There was a guy at the phone. He never got off the phone. And those two were in front of me, and they walked around to the counter and continued talking. You could have put all this stuff in your purse. I could have. I even dropped them. I dropped all those bracelets. They Deliberately all to try to yeah. get attention? One, and, and they never turned around or anything. It was though I was not worthy of their attention. Did you and, feel inferior? What was your emotion? No, I mean, I don't feel inferior when because I know there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> you know, they're the ones with the problem. But um, I, I really couldn't understand. And a lot of it was they just weren't doing their job either. But they well, yeah, did could this just me. be incompetent salespeople? On these two parts, yes, I believe it was. Yeah. This second one was really strange. I practically ran and chased the people through the store. <laughs> Once again, there was no one else in the store but me. It was a big store, but there were salespeople everywhere. And I watched the young lady go in before me, and she, they all ran to her and helped her. I sat here and looked around the counter. I picked up this purse to ask him how much it was. He walked past me. He's gonna, he looked at me, looked down. That's the guy here? Yes, there he is. And there's no one else in the store. I want to make sure you could see there was no one else in there. He ran behind the chute. See, he left. <laughs> I was holding up something to ask him how much it cost. He kept going. I was like, okay, let me find someone else. I found another young lady, and she did the same thing. I'm like, okay. <laughs> do you feel that that was racist behavior? In this store, I really do. And I'm being honest. This I is really an upscale do. store? It really was. And... I watched a, a, a white girl, she was with us. She went in before me, and I watched one after me, after, and they weren't treated the same way. I mean, three people came to one of them. And they, you were shocked? Yes, I really was. I didn't expect it. I thought mm -hmm. people were above that, especially the ones who call their store upper scale. I thought they would be above that. Well, but, there may be people who think that Phyllis uh, is being overly sensitive. We're going to talk to a woman next who says many people might be playing the race card. You'll also meet a woman who says her trip to the beauty supply store threatened, turned her into an ugly example of discrimination. We'll talk about it next. I want you to meet Essie Deloma. Hi, Essie. She's a sales associate in an upscale department store. Now, what do you think about our, our hidden camera investigation? And by the way, we had no idea how this was going to play out, and neither did Phyllis. We got what we got, and we showed it to you. Well, I think that um, a lot of the times people are looking for something they think it's racism. It could have been the fact that maybe the girls were talking about when they were going to go to lunch and they just, you know, they were focused on that rather than you. You could have been a white person and they wouldn't have, you and know, paid attention to you. that's what I said with those two. I believe they just weren't doing their job with mm -hmm. those two. Well, I've, I'm in management and I've trained, my girls know that, you know, any customer, their money is just as good as anybody else's. And that's if there's two people standing, they're going to get to whoever they can get to first, regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of anything. Do you have customers who, in essence, come into the store looking for trouble? I think so. I think that um, if there was a problem with a return or a customer didn't get greeted, they're going to say it's, you know, we're a race issue. Whether if it was someone that didn't see a race issue, they would just excuse it as maybe they were busy or maybe they, something else was going on. Do you think that there is a case where people can be hypersensitive and are just a chip on the shoulder? I believe they can be, but in, and that's why I like that they were two. We, we had more than one incident. So I saw the difference. I'm not hypersensitive or anything. <laughs> I know that they blatantly did not want to uh, wait on me because I was black. I watched the other cases before and after me. And we did the exact same thing. So that's this why I'm like, we were, there, what, what else could it have been? This doesn't just happen one race targeted towards another, although it certainly may be more prevalent uh, in one community. My next guest had a, a different experience, a tough one. She says that her trip to a beauty supply store turned into quite a nightmare. She feels that she was racially discriminated against, and she barely survived to even talk about it. We're going to call her Anne. She wishes to keep her identity partially hidden for safety reasons. Um, this was scary, what happened with you. Yeah. You were in a beauty supply store. I had gone into a beauty supply store to purchase a perm. Um, there were maybe three customers. You know, it was in a, a mostly Hispanic part of town. Um, the customers that were there looked more Hispanic than I do, and the sales clerk was black. Um, I went, to, you know, to the back of the store to look for the, the brand that I usually use, and um, I couldn't find it. So I asked the sales clerk where it might be, 
And she pointed to about 20 boxes that were stacked in the back of the store and said they would be over there. So I went back there and I'm looking through the boxes and I just, I could not find it. So she left and helped the person, you know, that, that she was helping before me. And uh, she came back to help somebody who came in after I did, who looked more Hispanic than I do. And um, I asked her again, I said, um, well, what would the box say on it? Because a lot of these, you know, don't have names on it. Right. And so uh, she said, well, it would say Zotos, which is the, the brand I was looking for. So I said, okay, so I'm continuing to look, and she's not helping me at all. So I decided to just purchase another brand. And so I, I grabbed another brand, because I had been in there maybe 15, 20 minutes, and uh, with no help, just looking by myself. And um, I went to the um, register where she was, and I asked her, well, did you just start working here? And she said, yes, I did. I said, well, you're not very helpful, are you? And she said, well, you're not the only person in here. I said, well, regardless, I've been in here plenty of times with a lot more people than this, and I've always received help when I've asked for it. Um, then she told me, well, you know, I don't need your help. And Gee, that seems rather unprovoked, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, and I said, well, I don't need your help. You know, so she said, well, do you want to buy that or don't you? And I said, yeah, I do. She said, well, I don't have to sell you anything. And, I mean, I, I did not know what I did to her. So did you then leave the store? I left the store. I'm walking to my car. She was the only sales clerk in the store, and there were customers inside. She came out of the store after me. She, now, imagine this scene. You go ahead into your car and boom, 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 boom. Here comes the sales representative. <laughs> so I'm walking out to my car, and um, she... I just remember her right in my face, just yelling at me, and um, she raised her hand to hit me, and I pushed it away, and she slugged me in my face, and that's all I remember. That's all I remember. Because she hit you so hard, you passed out? Yes. I was knocked unconscious. And your injuries were so severe that you had to be taken by ambulance? Yes. Well, I woke up in the ambulance, and um, there were about 10 witnesses that saw everything going on. and. Um, when I got to the hospital, I had two black eyes, a broken nose. Um, I had to have 13 stitches on my lip, and I had a hole in my eardrum. Can you imagine after you passed out, she must have just laid into you. She did. She hated me for some reason. I don't know what it was. We're going to continue with this horrific, nightmarish story in just a couple of minutes. Now, in this case, you were um, a, a victim of mistaken identity because you are, in fact, Hispanic. Am I right? Mm -hmm. She didn't know that? No. Do you think she would have treated you differently? I think so. All right, but for this lady, she says that being white in a predominantly black neighborhood has been an eye-opening experience for her. We'll talk more after the break. I can't believe this story we just heard from you, Anne. I mean, it's like hand that rocks the register or something. She was just... I mean, who knows what provoked this woman to come after you, but she beat you up so badly that you went to the hospital. What happened to her? Um, she got six months in the county jail with work release, and she got two and a half years probation. Is she still working in retail? Yes, she is. Oh, that just, that's just scary. I want you to meet Sally, uh, who has also experienced eyes heavy upon her in shopping situations. Tell me about, about it. Well, uh, my family and I moved to Nashville, Tennessee about two and a half years ago, and we live in a predominantly black neighborhood. And I had never experienced any type of racial discrimination in my entire life until we went shopping at the local grocery store, fast food restaurants, and gas stations. And there, what happens to us is the, the retail people are predominantly black because that's the area we live in. And when we go into the grocery store, they won't wait on us. They make a stand for hours. We've been to fast food restaurants where we've been made to, you know, wait for like an hour and a half for a pizza that we've called in for. Other people come on off the street, black people, they get waited on, they make their order, they leave, and we're still waiting. We've waited up to an hour and a half to get served. So you're saying you know how they feel. Exactly how they feel. Just and I don't know if it's that I know exactly how they feel. It's something that's new to me. Um, you know, when it first happened, at first we were just really shocked. And after, you know, when it continued to happen to us, we began to feel that 
there must be something wrong with us. And other than, other than your color. Well, no, they made it obvious it was our color. Tamara, you know, we've heard examples of white on black, black on white, and Asian on black, and Hispanic on, on what they thought was Caucasian. This, the, the sad reality is we do this to each other. Yes, bigots come in all colors. They're not exclusive to any one race. And I think that people need to not let that one negative experience generalize everyone of that ethnicity. There are criminals in every walks of life, in every profession, in every background. And it's important for us to treat each person with respect and the dignity that we all deserve as people. Thank you. You know, we said earlier, I'm going to grab this letter, that we had uncovered some information concerning Sylvia's story at the Burlington Coat Factory. I have a response and uh, some further news on this that might be of interest to you. We'll share it right after this. On this show, we came across some information apparently related to your story, Sylvia. Apparently, there is a lawsuit involving discrimination at some Burlington Coat factories. And uh, there was a newspaper article that we saw that in which some former employees claimed that code words were actually used when African Americans would come into the store. Allegedly, these code words were Robert Green is in the store if the customers were black males, and Roberta Green is here if the customers were black females. I know you filed an official formal complaint with the Burlington Coat Factory. What response yes. did you get? Uh, I was sent back a, a letter that looked like a form letter, basically saying that they apologized for my experience in their store and that it was their policy not to uh, have employees treat customers like this and that they would investigate it to see if it was a meritorious claim. Are you satisfied with that? Well, not really because since I got that response, I gave them what I felt was a sufficient amount of time to, to get back with me or, or say something. So I waited about two months and I called a number that I had talked to someone at before, but I kept getting voicemail and I kept leaving a message saying, could someone please call me back and let me know the status of this investigation and what has happened? Well, we, we did get a response, and I appreciate this response from the chairman of the board at Burlington Coat Factory, and um, obviously we have had to, to edit the lengthy letter, but in part he says, let me say it is Burlington Coat Factory's policy to prohibit discrimination on the basis of race, color, creed, gender, national origin, age, disability, or any other improper reason. He goes on to say, we feel that Ms. Skinner may have misunderstood the situation. Excuse. And the manager of the store in question at the time of her complaint, who remains in that position today, is herself an African American, who would be deeply disturbed if other African Americans were being mistreated in her store. Do you feel that, that they are adequately investigating and does this help you feel that your complaints are being responded to? Uh, no, my question is where is the manager that said you people to me? I'd like to know that he is not still out there uh, working with the consumer. Um, and as far as them having an African American manager, my issue wasn't with her. She's not the person who offended me. And whether they're in New Jersey or wherever, telling me that they have an African-American store manager doesn't, doesn't change your doesn't experience. Doesn't change my experience. I guess they're saying exactly. it was on her watch. So right. yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And there, you know, there's. I, I want to, um, when we come back, go to someone um, who has says yes, this this exists. In fact, he said that he lived in a neighborhood where he couldn't even get food delivered in because the delivery services, the restaurants, were scared to go there. And they just said, if you live there, we are not going there. Well, he found a way to make that system work for him. We'll talk about it next. Listen to the whole show, and you say you've experienced this too? Yes, okay, I'm a Jewish woman. I live in a 100% black neighborhood, and people are friendly, they're courteous, I am treated Beautifully, I'm treated the same as everyone else by black people. I have no problems, but I was in a major department store and I was told by the store manager who did not know that I lived there and the gentleman was not black himself that they have different policies in my black neighborhood because of who is in the neighborhood. So I would like somebody to tell me that 
Sylvia is imagining things and that there isn't racism. And if you don't admit a pro there's a problem, you can't correct it. Well, you know, you hit on something there, which is admit that there's a problem. Um, for, uh, first of all, I don't want to get away without saying that Tamara has this book, 602 Ways to Build and Promote Racial Harmony. This is a good thing. You know, there are lots of quick hits in there, including little things like sit next to someone you've been taught to fear, question authority. I love what you say in here, Tamara. And I, I want to go to the telephone now because there's a, there's a gentleman on the line who has been very enterprising and started a business. Derek Eves, are you there? Yes, I am, Lisa. How Derek, are you? I'm great. Tell me about your company called Homeboys, Inc. <laughs> Basically, Lisa, I ordered a pizza one night and I couldn't get it. So I asked them why and they told me that they didn't deliver it to my neighborhood. And I asked them why again, and they said, because of the violence. So basically, you know, you're discriminating against us because of, of statistics. So I formed a company, Homeboys Incorporated, and I started delivering pieces myself. <laughs> and Derek, have you had any problems since you've been doing it? Have you been afraid, or have you had any incidents of violence? No, no violence, no problems. People are happy to see us. Kids love us. And do they um, tip you? Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Good for you. It's a, it's a great idea for a business. I hope it's very successful. You're, you're, you're promoting a, uh, you know, it, it, unfortunately, it's one of those, if you can't lick it, find a way around it. But um, you're an enterprising young man. Thanks. Thank you very much, ladies. I want to go back to, you had a conversation earlier with, with Sylvia when she, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, with Sherry talking about what's the appropriate way to dress. Yes, um, she commented about how I was dressed that I'm appropriate, so in, if I would come into her store, she probably wouldn't watch me as hard. The reason why I make a, pers a personal effort to dress, because I, re I experienced retail racism when I was 16. I walked, my girlfriend and I went into a store, a fine department store, and we were wearing shorts, um, summer of tire. This gentleman asked us where we, we, um, to leave the store. And I basically ignored him, but my girlfriend asked him why, you know, why you're asking to leave. He said, well, don't you think you've been in here long enough? So the experience was positive at first, but when he made that comment and asked us to leave the store, I even purchased something in that store also. It made us upset, so we actually left because it wasn't a good experience. But we went home and I spoke with her mother. She said it's because we were, how we were dressed. Mm -hmm. So ever since that experience, I make a point to dress a certain way so I don't have to experience anything like that again. I even teach my daughter, don't touch anything, you know, because I know they're watching us because of the color of my skin. So it and created a, something else in me. Yeah, and that's a pressure that no one deserves and no child needs to grow up feeling that they are under a watchful eye because they happen to be born a certain color. I hope, if nothing else, that we have um, helped everyone to just be honest with ourselves about it. Let's admit that it goes on. Let's be kinder to each other and look for ways, Tamara, to build racial harmony. Thank you all so much. I've enjoyed the hour. We appreciate you being here. Until next time, take good care of yourself. Just share your comments. I just wanted to say that uh, it's been so ingrained in, uh, in this country, that kind of treatment, that sometimes we even experience it from our own people. I recently uh, purchased a new car, I think maybe in December. And I went to Beverly Hills and went to uh, a Lexus deal there, and I was treated poorly. I went to a Lexus dealer in Glendale, and I was treated poorly. I was even told to come back when you win the lottery.